Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um we've tackled question 5 that is how is the spread of Islam? How is the spread of peace um made into da'wah by Islam, by the Muslims? Um first I'll uh, give this by giving the first statement that um this actually comes in the form of an equation. Islam equals to peace. So we need to prove that uh through some points. Um by superposition the Sorry. first thing is that islam um perpetuates peace in all of its agenda in all of its entirety the second thing is that um for us to live in harmony we need to be at peace for anything to happen for development to happen for economic integration to happen there must be peace so having peace as part of the da'wah is a very important thing because it's actually one of the things that entails the meaning of Islam. The other thing is that um as part of Islam it emphasizes on people living in harmony, people living together, people living in a way that has been prescribed by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is um as it has been referred to as during the times of the khalifas peace was actually one of the thing that was really emphasized even during the time of the khalifas actually having problems uh, for example the time of muawiya and ali radiyallahu anha peace was actually one of the major thing that was actually emphasized then and we can perpetuate the same on to our leaders today in that particular manner thank you mashallah thank you uh huh yes Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So with the with the group here we took uh, the question youth as a tool of violence. Mm -hmm. And uh, these were the points we discussed. Uh, the first the first reason or the main objectives for youth being as a tool of violence I will say will be inf influence of politicians due to unemployment. Uh, youths out here are unemployed. So when it reaches the after before and after the elections you find that uh, they are being they are being uh, they are being manipulated with money or they are being brought as a crowd to burn the streets and protest for a given politician to move his regime to the court or make that person a winner uh, in the eyes of the citizen or IBC uh, the second point i uh, will talk about will be drug addiction Uh, many youths out here have been drug addicts alcoholic for example so when youths are out here and uh, they are drug addicts at the end of the day they are so aggressive and uh, they are very energetic active their cells are very active to any activity so it's always easier to advise this sort of people uh, another point could be uh, manipulation where, where i said initially There is in times we've seen politicians trying to manipulate the youths by giving them money uh bringing them to board offices to talk to them uh boycotting or sabotaging uh elections for them to win yeah thank you thank you uh, also access to weapons mm -hmm. uh some uh, some uh, youths out here have access to weapons this influence them to Uh, be in arms allow youth to uh, alter their violence and this happens partly due to media coverage the media also covers this making other youths in other parts of the country see what their other youths are doing mitigating that not mitigating that uh, in violence uh, thank you wow mashallah so you, you guys are really bringing out very important points that we need to take note and maybe look at what is the way forward in another forum maybe is there any other person this side okay so i'll go ahead if uh, by the time i'm through the we have more time or not maybe we might be able to take more opinions but uh, this is something that i wanted us to discuss because it is the core of today's topic it is the core of today's topic because we are in the electioneering period and it is full of what 
there is a lot that is happening. If we go down memory lane and some facts about our election, electioneering behaviors, you find that youth are easily mobilized, as you've said. They can be alienated from uh, other people. They can be actually also disengaged from involving themselves in doing what is right. So that's why you find you as youth, plus what you've also given the unemployment, the drugs and everything, you find that that is a fact and it is an, a very important fact that you need to take note of. Half of the Kenyan electorate are between 18 to 35 years. So you are the ones that are being targeted by politicians. Of course, if I want you to vote for me, I'm going to do what? I'll, I'll, I'll want you to talk against my opponent, right? So you are the ones who are half of the youth are the elect, are actually the people who vote. And then 70% of those people who are in, have been engaged in post-election violence are youth. That's why youth come in as a very important group when it comes to peace and spreading of peace. Then in the 2000 and 2008 post-election violence, the effects of those is that we had 1,133 people who died. We also had 650,000 people who were displaced. We had 3,561 3, people who were injured and we had 100,017 who actually uh, property from government and private that were destroyed. That is the impact of lack of peace. So when you look at the impact of lack of peace, then it makes you do what? Inakufanya utake kuona the other side. Because the effect it atupata. So you've talked about a number of things in relation to peace. So the effects of violence will find us wherever we are. Okay? Because kama saile nyinyi muko uko inje muna pigana manini, Si nyinyi ndio mtaumia? Si ndio? Nyinyi ndio mtakosa kukuja shule. Maybe uh, campus itafungwa one semester wale hadhi bila mindalik na ulikuwa unataka umalize labda kuna job ulikuwa ushakuwa promised. Si ndio? So you find it is still the same youth that will be affected for non, for the violence. There are things that happen when there is violence. Kuna vitu kama tunaita sexual and gender based violence. Si ndio? We have sisters, we have mothers, we have neighbors, aunties, and all that. Yeah? So these are the vulnerable people who are usually targeted in times of violence. Okay? So this behavior, the, the violent behavior, mtu anazaliwa nayo. Apart from Isa alayhi salam, ushaona mtoto amezaliwa kanza kuongea. Kuna mtoto ameamka, akaanza kurusha mawe. So it means we learn. It means we do what? We learn. And that is why I wanted to connect peace and behavior as being a learned phenomenon, okay? Um, I'm not uh, someone who is well-versed in deen, but I know there's a hadith that says that all of us have been born under fitra, right? Then we learn what we learn from who? Our? parents, our environment. So in psychology, we say the issues that uh, influence someone's behavior are either nature or nurture, right? So there's something you will learn from your parents. Maybe you will pick it up. Maybe the way your parents smiles. Of course, kuna temperaments that you might pick from your, someone will tell you, you, you behave very like your father or like your auntie, yeah? So there are some things that are in your genes. It's hereditary, right? But again, there are some things that you pick from the environment. You, you talked about uh, you come from an environment where by kila siku watu wanapigana. So, kama kila saa watu wanapigana, hata ukienda uko inje mtaki kuchokoza, utafanya nini? Utakunja? Si utakunja mashati, sindio? Unakunja mashati, unambia mtu nishike, nishike yama mtu atamwaga damu. Si hivu ndetu kwa tunafanya? Lakini ukienda po labda utatandikwa, uwe ndio tutakunja, tutakubeba, sindio? So what you see affects, okay? So there's someone in psychology, alikuwa naitua Ivan Pavlov. Alikuwa naitua nani? Ivan Pavlov. You don't have to remember his name. 
But this person alifanya experiments. Unajua hizi experiments mingi sana zinafanywa kwa kwanza na animals alafu ndio zinakuja zinajaribiwa kwa human beings. In fact it's an ethical kufanya some of these experiments on human beings. Okay? So that's why they start with animals. So this guy alichukua a dog. Okay? So what did he do with this dog? Kawaida sa ile mtu anasikia njaa si an, anakipewa chakula akiona chakula anafurahi labda anaanza kutoka na mate anakula si ndio so aka aka akipa so hiyo dogi ikipewa cha, ikiona chakula si obviously ita, ita salivate na itataka kukula ile chakula so what he did aka aka piga piga kengele he used a bell eh? akapiga kengele ile dog haiku salivate okay haikutoa ile mate yani kuonesha iko na hamu ya kukula then akaleta chakula wakati alikuwa analeta chakula ana, anapiga ile kengele and then analeta chakula okay so with time the dog learned kwamba every time the bell rings food is coming so when the dog ikakuwa ikisikia ile dog ile kengele even without food inafanya nini inatoa mate because ina expect chakula itafanya nini italetwa So this is not the natural way that people behave but this dog was conditioned to do what to know kwamba when the bell rings food is coming and at some point your dog ikafanya nini so for example kama inakuja ni issue ya elections violence nini sa ile tunaona mtu ameva maybe tunaanza kuona matangazo elections are coming What happens we may be prepare naturally prepare maybe kama if we are voters we prepare ourselves maybe tunaangalia nilishajisajili kwa kura si ndio you look at such things but sasa kwa mfano someone comes and tells you hey usikose you're welcome so usikose ku vote because this person amesema tukimvotia atatupatia kazi kwa vijana. Si unaona hiyo ime influence just like the bell when they were done together with the food now you salivate okay? So this person ana ku influence unaenda unajisajili ama someone tells you we have you know you already know who you will vote for but someone tells you if we if we don't create like to, to spoil shida kwa hii mtaa this other person ata kuwa voted in. So lazima tuende turushe moyo. So si unazoea kwamba for your person to be voted in lazima ufanye nini? Urushe nini? Mawe, si ndio? So it is not a behavior that you had but you learned it. You learn you learned it. Okay? So what am I trying to say? Kwamba behavior you can learn it. You can unlearn it. Okay? Hakuna kitu utasema ati ah sisi tumeshazoea hivyo lazima tufanye hivyo. Una na saingine you do something for a very long time until you start believing that that is the right thing to do. But we have seen proof from studies from experiments that people can have behavior that alikuwa hana because I may pick from someone, okay? Like the Sheikh said, you the friends you choose you learn from from them so what are we saying during this electioneering period it's very important to do uh, you can choose peace you can choose to work towards peace because if you do it over some period of time and i've seen in the program there is a point whereby you talk about how to i think learn behaviors or something how to uh, keep on uh, there is something in the program i saw that will help you now know how do you maintain a certain behavior that you want okay so what the, the yeah, if there is anything that i want to leave here is that ujue whatever behavior you learn you can unlearn it if it is a negative behavior you can relearn a behavior that is constructive and unlearn a behavior that is destructive in relation to what peace because we've seen the distractions that violence can bring about okay so i want to end there and if there are any questions 
I will take any questions. Any questions or um, even feedback, anything? Yes? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How can you relearn or unlearn those behaviors? So, the, I believe uh, Madam Rukia will talk about something on behavior modification, but for you to unlearn behavior, there are steps that you need to take, okay? First, you need to identify which behavior do I want to unlearn. Then you need to like come up with action points. What do I need to do to, first you find out what is it that influences me to do this thing? For example, if we are talking about uh, uh, being violent, maybe, for example. At what point do I become violent? Do I become violent? Saile ni kona mse flani, ndiyo najipata ni nataka sana kutuka nana, manini. So probably a friend of mine is influencing me. Am I maybe not finishing my assignments because I'm lazy? You get. So you identify what are the reasons as to why you are not, you are, you are having that behavior. Where is it coming from? Then now you put up action points. What do I need to do for me to do what? To be able to leave this behavior. For example, if it's a assignment, if you're not finishing and you find probably I wait until last minute. Ndiyo nifanya assignment yangu. Alafu instead of kuifanya, inaenda kwa Google na iweka, alafu na jipata niko na plagiarism. Napata 0%. Sindio? So unajiambia next time, I'm, I'm going to try nifanya assignment yangu in good time, I can do a draft. Then I come later, I look at, maybe start correcting it. Then eventually, nitakuwa. So you unajieke a timeline. You have to put for yourself a timeline. If you are putting a, an action plan, you have to do what? Ujipati a timeline. By this time, I need to do this. I need to do this. If it's maybe a friend, now you tell yourself, okay, this friend. Whenever I'm with this person, I find myself behaving in a certain way that I don't like. What do I do? Uh, maybe do I reduce the time I spend with this person? Have I tried to give this person dawa? You see, sangine unampatia dawa, maybe unana it's not working. Can you maybe excuse yourself with a reason? Useme, maybe I need to do A, B, C, D. I cannot join you. Because kimwambia tu siyezi hang na wewe, atakuliza kwa nini, you know. At times when you give a reason, someone understands better, Okay. Then, while you are modifying your behavior, it's very important to understand saingine utajaribu na utashindwa. There's something we call relapse when you are modifying your behavior. Okay? So, saingine unaona unashindwa, do not give up. Usi lose hope. It is okay. Okay? Jaribu tena. Ukianguka, unajaribu nini? See, we all know the story of easy bulbs, eh? The person who did this. Ali fail marangapi? But he tried. So don't give up when you fail to modify your behavior. Look at maybe people who can encourage you, people who can give you support, people who can encourage you change whatever you want to change. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Kaimeni. I'm a student here and also a student leader here. So you being in the psychology, psychology world and also in the religion world, and peace. Uh, I have a concern. Uh, currently, on campus level, we have a number of issues like basically mental health on students. And in some point, this issue is also brought about uh, lacking basic needs or necessities which comrades use on daily to day basics. So how can we incorporate uh, religion uh, as an avenue to tackle mental health, especially in a campus uh, setup? Yeah. Thank you. That's uh, an important question. Um, maybe a part of it can be tackled by the sharks who come after me, but uh, there's something we call being self-aware and self-acceptance. Okay, 
And uh, at times it might not be so easy at this age because you see your friends having this, you don't have it, and it influences you. But now when it comes to being aware of who you are, you ask yourself, who am I as Rukia Mohammed, as a, a Hassan or as a whoever you are? Um, this is, for example, my height. So if I start crying because I'm not this tall, what will happen to me? I'm going to, I'm going to do what? I'm going to get sick, I'm going to give up, I look at myself as someone who is not good enough, okay? So it's always good to know what are your strengths. All people are not the same. People come from different backgrounds. So you find maybe you can afford to get, what are the things that, uh, like what are the needs in campus that you would say people want to have and maybe they don't have? An example, so that I can be specific. Sorry? Rent? Meals? Uh -huh. So unapata rent, eh? So probably you want to go to a place that is above level yako. So ingine maybe hauna, hauna, okay? So that one maybe is upon the KCA community to see. We are one, eh? So how do you help each other? But when you have something to some certain extent, but you feel you need to have better we are always told to look at that person who is below us so that you don't feel discouraged. But when it comes to someone who is needy, needy, then maybe as a community, you need to find ways of helping the people who are much less fortunate than the others. And then once you, are, you like align, this is who I am, this is what I can afford, this is what I have, then this is me, and being who I am at the level that I am, there's nothing wrong with me, okay? It is okay to be me who is different from the other person who has more. We can never be same. Imagine a world where we were all the same. I think it would be very boring, yeah? So just know yourself, self-awareness, eh? Know yourself, know your levels, and accept yourself, and there's nothing wrong there's no one who is better than the other because the only person who is better is the person who is more God-fearing than the other. Yes? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. I have a question, maybe it may be out of topic, it's but okay. I think it's something that affects uh, youth. Some may know, some don't know. How can a person deal with anxiety? Okay. Yeah. So how, how can a person deal with anxiety? A, yeah, anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah. So anxiety, you know, anxiety is a mental health uh, ailment. You see, like the way you have high blood pressure, you have cancer, it is a disease like any other. You know, mental health has been very stigmatized, such that when someone has a mental health issue, they're looked at it as if, but that's not the case. It's just like the way you will have high blood pressure. So I'll classify it into two. Eh? There is zile two exam anxiety at times because when the exams are coming, you find your anxious. You know, there is also maybe during COVID, there was also a lot of anxiety because we didn't know what's going to happen next. Like for me, I thought, ah, we are dead. Sisto mesha kuisha kabisa, dunia imeisha. Okay? But kuna ile level lingine, unapata it is an an ailment, okay? It is an ailment that is serious. So unapata, how do you deal with it? Kama it's that ailment, you need to see, uh, we have psychiatrists. These are doctors who specialize on mental health. Then they'll uh, give you, like if there is whatever, they will give you their prescriptions and all that and come up with a treatment plan. But generally, peer with anxiety, we usually talk about that awareness and grounding yourself. When someone is anxious, maybe they feel, their heart is racing, maybe they are a bit scared. There's one thing that I'll leave you with you, like we call it grounding. When you feel you are anxious, first and foremost, the first thing is for you to get yourself out of that anxiety. So you, look, you can look around, use your five senses. What can you see, okay? What can you touch? 
what can you hear? What can you smell? Because by that time when you're anxious, you find that your mind is not in the real. So by grounding yourself, you are bringing yourself to present. Okay? So you bring yourself to present, then from there, later, you'll be able to look at, if it's this normal anxiety, what is it that gave me that anxiety? Then maybe you can work on avoiding, not avoiding with anxiety, we like it when you flood yourself so that you know, after, at the, after all, nothing happened even when I did. Maybe speaking anxiety. Maybe you start by speaking uh, to a small crowd of people, then a big group. Then you, after that, you tell yourself, after all, I didn't die. And I spoke. Eh? But when it is that level whereby this is something that you have that is serious, then you need to be seen by a psychiatrist and a therapist so that they can help you slowly by slowly to work on it. I, I think my time is up. Can I take one more question, Ama? One last question. Yes. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Uh, as a youth, uh, there's limits, right, uh, for you to spread the peace. If no, then how do you set those? No, I'm, yeah, no if if yes, how do you set those limits? And because uh, the behavior in spreading peace or the behavior for you as a youth to adapt is defined by the community or the society you are in, right? Mm -hmm. So now, for example. If there's a limit, then it's fine. You can go and spread the peace. But the limits now, how will you know? Like, for example, sometimes you might you might you might think something is good for you to do or to try to show someone, but the behavior defined by that community, the thing which you're doing, is not good. You see, so how do you know those kinds of limits or those kind of boundaries? Like, uh, where do you draw the line yeah. in relation to the community and all that? So that's a tough one. You know, we never have all the answers to all questions. But I can look at it from this perspective. Define what is it that you can do as a youth. You have the social media. There's something you can write there that will influence another youth. And um, as Sheikh told us, so long as it's not something that is lying and all that, you can use the social media for da'wah, right? Then there's also abstaining when people are maybe talking bad things on social media, wanatukanana and all that, you can abstain. So when it comes to the community, I wish you could be more specific on maybe an issue within the community that maybe you would want to talk about and that community does not want. I don't know if you can, you have a specific example. I'll, 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 you have, eh? Okay. Yeah, sometimes uh, the boundaries or the behavior, the community, maybe they are, they are trying to show or they're trying to learn is they're defined by the religious activities which are there, okay. or sometimes cultural activities which are there. Hmm. So for you as a youth, how do you, and you have gotten my answer, my question. Okay, I'm getting you somewhere. I, I believe there's no community that might want you to spread violence instead of peace. Yeah. So unless maybe it's a community whereby maybe we find and we at times lack that, we are not involving the youth more often in issues that affect the community. Maybe we look at the youth as people who are So when it comes to communities like that, it's usually good, you know, like the way Sheikh said, look at who is the, who is the opinion leader in that community. You have something, you have a voice that you want to, like uh, there's something you want to spread, but the community does not allow. So who, nani ndio mwenye kusema kwa your community? You go talk to that person. You tell them, maybe you can go a group of you or, and tell them this is what we feel. Then let them hear you. At times when you include people in what you want to do, they become more receptive than when unatumia mabavu. Si ukitumia mabavu, again, it goes to violence, right? So when it comes to search, unangalia, who are those people we can approach? 
And if it's something that is against your religion, now you make your decision, okay? But if it is not, and it is just the people in the community, then you just talk to them in a nice way, in a wise way, in a respectable way, and maybe that person is the person who will be your, your actually your voice. Have I answered that partly? 50%. Okay, and also knowing your boundaries. What can you do? What can you do? What can you not do? I think I want to, uh, to stop there. And uh, I appreciate you guys for listening and for your involvement. Kabir. Shukran, jazakumullahu khairan. We really appreciate the talk. Indeed, it, it was touching a good topic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to stay upon his recommendations and forbid what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented us from doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the Sheikh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase him in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his grave a garden among the gardens of paradise. Amin. One takbir for the Sheikh. Takbir. Okay, so before we break for uh, lunch and salah, we would like to have uh, another speaker. Uh, this is Madam Ruqiyya Isa. Just a short description about her. She is a certified primary teacher and life coach with 14 plus years in education. Subhanallah. Her interest is in mostly in Islamic education, Islamic approach to education. She started it in 2015 when she learned about the lesson plan integration by Dr. Bilal Phillips. Since then, she has been working in, a, in creating Islamic approach to bring back Islamic moral education in madrasa and Islamic schools. Subhanallah. I think that is what we, require, we, we need currently in the so-called integrated schools. We need to integrate them with more Islamic approach to education. She is currently the principal at Arisala Academy, Nairobi, Kenya, the founder of, of Hopeful Muslim, the teacher, she is a teacher providing online madrasa. She does coaching. She is an author and a consultant. Subhanallah. Those are so many achievements. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala add more for her. And let us all lend her our ears. Let us listen to her attentively. And may we be guided through her. May, her, may she be a source of guidance to us. May we benefit from her. You are welcome. The stage is yours, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, how are you all? How are you all? You're fine, alhamdulillah. So um, I'm Rukia, as you have been given my introduction. But uh, just a disclaimer, I'm not an uh, Islamic scholar in any way. The little I have learned, I have put it in practice, and I'm here to share it with you, inshallah. So I'm not going to take much of, your, of, the, of time talking. I believe in engaging with you more than just to telling you what to do and how to do it. So I'm really appreciative that uh, Sheikh Anna started a talk that is directly connected to what I'm going to be um, engaging you in, and that is finding your purpose, inshallah. So um, I'm going to start handing over this after we have done a very short exercise, and that is I want you to take a deep breath. And I want you to connect with your, your inner child, the one that you, you know, seven years old, eight years, 10 years, connect with that child, okay? And I want you to connect with him or her and think about what you used to fantasize. What do you, do you use to daydream? When I grow up, I'm going to do this. When I grow up, I'm going to do this. Think of those things in your head. Okay, can we move on now? I can see some of you are smiling. I want you to, to think of the fantasies, the daydreaming that you used to have when your teacher will throw a pen on your head and say, come back to class, kind of, or when you're, you're in, a, in a function or something and you have some dreams in there. I want you to connect with those. It's very important for this exercise. There is nothing silly about it. You will, you will understand it when I tell you about it. Now I want you to write them down. Write as many as you can, and I'm giving you 30 seconds. Write those dreams of that child, your inner child. Write them down as many as you can. Don't limit yourself. 
Please don't limit yourself. Don't think, is this silly or is this good? If you have a phone, you can just list them in your phone. It's okay, wherever you feel comfortable doing that. Uh -huh.